Detective Norman. Can I join you? Sorry for the delay, but I didn't want anybody seeing me. If you know what I mean. What can I get you, sir? Just a coffee. Coming right up. It's not my habit to sit with people like you. Got a business proposition for you, Detective. I ain't no businessman. And even if I were, I wouldn't be doing business with the likes of you. I don't usually do business with your kind either. But this is a bit of a strange deal. Good for you and your superiors, and good for me. It concerns a certain kind of trade. Trade? Well, let's just say that I hold a high position in a not-so-legal organization. It's just the kind of organization people such as yourself would like to know a lot about. And I, on the other hand, for certain reasons, don't want... Your coffee, sir. Thanks. I have my own personal reasons why I don't want to be associated with this organization. It ain't too easy to leave this kind of business, if you know what I mean. I think I know where you're coming from. You'll get a bullet in your head if you don't disappear quickly, right? That's not the only reason. Got any kids, Detective? I've got a wife and daughter. I don't want them to have any problems because of me. Yeah, well, I ain't just gonna hand out protection to any wop crook. You should have thought about them kids before, because I... Sure, sure. Listen, I don't want something for nothing. So here's the deal. Does the name Salieri mean anything to you? Salieri? It damn well does. You got something to come with him? You could say that. I've worked for him for several years. Now he wants to rub me out. If you protect my family and me, I'll tell you everything. Names, dates, accounts, everything. Enough to put him away for life. I ain't Santa Claus. If I go to the chief with this, I need to know everything you know. And I have to be sure you'll testify in court. Sure. If you ain't in a hurry, I'll tell you my whole story. And all the deals I've worked on over the years. Okay. I've got time, and I'm listening. I used to be a taxi driver. Even though I wasn't making much and I worked from dawn to dusk, I was glad to be working. It was a bad time and some other people were worse off than me. It was that very taxi that drew Salieri's people to me in the first place. One day I was on my break and I was just hanging out. Suddenly I heard a tremendous crash. Sam! They got me! Damn it! Climb up and move. There's a taxi. We'll be okay. It was clear to me that these guys had to get out of there fast, so I thought it was best to cooperate, rather than ending up with a hole in my head. Move it. Come on. Where to? Anywhere! Fast! I hope you're damn fast! Faster than Sam here was! I burned rubber out of there like a bat out of hell. It didn't matter where, just away from those gentlemen who were chasing my new customers. Now listen carefully. We gotta shake these clowns behind us. If you don't do it, then we're done for. That includes you. Step on it, kid. Move it! I don't wanna die! Step on it or we're done for! Can't you go any faster? Idiot, go! Great! <laughs> we made it! Good work, brother. Now take us to Sayeri's bar. I'll show you the way.
Finally, we're home. Wait here, friend. Sam will get you a little something from Mr. Salieri. Thanks for your help. Mr. Salieri would like to thank you as well as myself and Polly. It's compensation for the damage to your car and your services. It should be enough. Yes, uh, of course. Thanks. Uh, give my regards to Mr. Salieri. Mr. Salieri wants you to know that he is very grateful to you. If you ever need anything, you can come back and ask for help. Because Mr. Salieri doesn't forget about friends who have helped him out. If you're interested, maybe we could find a job for you here. And it would pay well. We always have positions for guys as good as you. Okay, uh, okay. I'll think about it. Thanks. Uh, really, thanks. I'd, I'd better go uh, to fix the car and so on. All right. I understand. Just think about it. And I hope it's clear that this matter is only between ourselves. You take care, kid. When I opened the envelope, I almost had a heart attack. There was more than it would cost to do the repairs. But I didn't for a minute think about their offer. I didn't want to join some criminals, even if they had all the money in the world. It's better to be poor and alive than rich and dead, right? I was going to get my cab repaired and try to forget it all as soon as possible. As my mother always said, you can never predict what God has in store for you. Late heart seen dark. Silvery moon is shining through the trees. Cast to me, you. Sound of kisses floating on the breeze. Act one.